Provide Shalom, another GMS on the go, back with another lesson. And with saying that, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the ones that taught me the 100% truth according to this Bible. Peace and blessings to all you sincere Akims, man. Pushing this Bible week in and week out, regardless of people here for a bear. You know, in the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. We're going to hop right into it. This GMS on the go is called um, The Biggest I Told You So is Coming. Starting off with the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. We, we hit the streets week in and week out. We do sit down lessons to let the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians know, which are Hebrew Israelites, to let them know what's coming, what's going to befall them, that America is going to be destroyed. We let them know about the famine, the race riots, cannibalism, concentration camps, the RFID chip being made mandatory on the whole earth, mainly here in, in America. And, and no one believes us, man. Which the spirit of your how about Shemiel Shai is not on them to believe us anyway. But the point is, soon come the biggest I told you so is going to hit you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans dead in the face, man. And look, and look we're, going to act, we're going to laugh our ass off, Lord willing, I'm part of that number in that day. Start the camera back, son. Lord willing, I'm part of that number. I'm going to laugh my ass off in that day when the majority of our people are starving their asses off, man. You know, when they're getting chipped, when they end up in that race riot, that famine, so forth and so on. Why? Because you was warned by the prophets of the Lord. So the first scripture I'm going to get is um, Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. And bring out a couple more scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. These videos that we do are to edify the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, which consists of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And Lord willing, brothers will be edified, right? So this is Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries. And the word prophesy means to tell you something before it happened. So before all these things take, take part here in America and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, the God of the Bible sent forth his servants, the prophets. And they, they warn you and tell you of things that are coming before it happened, man. But it's the, but it's the majority of the Nick Rose, Latinos, and Native American is taking heed to what we're telling them according to the Bible. So we tell you what thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible got to say. We don't come out of our own minds, man, and tell you what we think is going to happen. No, we tell you what thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible is going to happen, right? So once again, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, prophesy both against many countries so the real prophets of the Lord are going to be prophesying against whatever country they in man and against great kingdoms of war we let our people know that World War III you know what I'm saying is going to destroy America man before it even happened we let our people know man just like before um, the God of the Bible flooded the earth man then he sent forth a servant a prophet to tell you that it was going to happen before it happened didn't know it warned our people that it was going to rain, man, that a flood was coming, a great flood, the greatest flood ever known to mankind. Didn't it happen? And, and Noah told our people that it was going to happen way before it happened, man. He was out there telling our people for 120 some years that, that, that the God of the Bible was going to flood the earth, man. And no one took heed. Now, now look, 2018, you got the prophets coming right back, starting off with the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and the men on down, telling our people the same thing. But ain't nobody taking heed. But is that going to stop the prophecies from happening? No, it's not going to stop it, man. No, because everything that's written up in the scripture is still going to come to pass. Still going to come to pass. Let me, matter of fact, let me get this right quick since I said that. Let's get Isaiah right quick. Isaiah 55. Because these aren't our words. These are the words of the Lord, man. So this is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be. They go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the words that we speak aren't our words. They're the words that you have, but shall shine. shy. And the God of the Bible said, yo, my words are not going to go out void. The words that I speak and the God of the Bible speaks through his men. They're not going to go out void. They're going to accomplish that which I please. So when we tell our people that World War III is going to pop off here in America, it's going to happen, man. When we tell our people about the race riots, the cannibalism, the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, all that is going to come to pass, man. And we're going to get that, man. 
So let's go back. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war. So World War III is going to be the end all, be it all. It's going to be the war of wars, man. World War III is going to, um, it's going to be the, the act of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, which is going to destroy America, man. ICBM missiles is going to hit this place, man. That's henceforth the name of this video, man. The biggest I told you so is coming, man. All right? It's coming. End of evil. We're telling our people that ain't nothing but bad times coming. While the false prophets and the false pastors are telling our people that love is coming. That hugs are coming. That kisses is coming. That um, a bright future is coming for them here in America, man. When the prophets of old are prophesying against everything, man. They let them know bad times is coming, evil days are coming. The majority of our people going to be eating their kids soon. Come, All that is coming, man. Then you got no light and the rest of those false prophets talking about some, um, how, how can these things happen? What do you mean these things are going to happen? We're telling you what the Lord is telling you, man. You know, the Lord gave us the word, man. We're telling you what the Lord is telling you. The Lord say um, our people are going to eat each other, man. And they're going to eat their babies, man. And we tell you these things before it happens, because right about now, one will look at us crazy. That's why these people look at us crazy right about now, man. When we tell our people that they're going to be eating their kids soon come. And they're going to be eating each other soon come. Because why, why do they look at us all crazy like that? Because you got shit, restaurants on each corner. You got all these grocery stores. And the trucks, you know what I'm saying, be coming in and out of these grocery stores. You know, flooding flooding the, um, the shelves with food. So our people say, how, how dare can you say that, yo, when I just left Walmart? And I just left um, Food Line, I just left Bilo and whatever grocery store, I just left um, Dollar Tree and got something for a dollar. So what you mean it's going to be a famine? What do you mean I'm going to be eating my daughter's soon come? Because the God of the Bible got us telling you things before it happened, man. And of pestilence. So, the, so a whole lot of you people going to be catching um, uncurable diseases soon come, man. The biggest I told you so is coming, man. So let's get in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter. The biggest I told you so is coming. And look, and in that day when it do come, you ain't going to be able to say that you wasn't warned. Because the God of the Bible told us to give them warning from him, man. And that's what we do. So this is 2 Ezra chapter 15. We're going to hop right straight down to some points. I'm going to start at 1 and I'm going to jump down. 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. See, that? there it go again. That word prophesy and prophecy mean the same thing, man. We're telling you things before it happened. What did the God of the Bible tell us again to do? 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. That my people is talking about you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And every damn body, man. But this scripture specifically is talking to the Hebrew Israelites, right? But it's going to be the biggest I told you so for all you other nations too. Starting off with the so-called white man, we tell him, telling him his kingdom is going down through the spirit he have by Shemel and they're going head first into captivity. All that is going to happen, man. It's going to be the biggest I told you so coming, man. You know, once again, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, meaning we're telling our people things that's going to happen before it happens, right? Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So these words are faithful and true, meaning they're going to come to pass. And in the scriptures that, that haven't came to pass, they're going to come to pass because a whole lot of these scriptures written already they came to pass already, man. All right? World War I, World War II, you know what I'm saying? The flood, us going into captivity, you know what I'm saying? Egypt, the Persian and the Medes, you know what I'm saying? Rome. Babylon, all that was written of in the scripture, didn't all that take place? Then the Babylonians rule, then the Persians and the Medes rule, then the Romans rule, then the Greeks rule. Yahweh about Shemiah Shah said his words are faithful and true. So we're going to jump down to the point. We'll jump down to 15. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draw of night. And a, and a sword is any killing instrument, man. It says, this, cause, but, but what happened to all the peace and the love, though, man? You got all these false prophets and these pastors teaching our people that peace is coming, man. You know, they're going to um, they're gonna reduce world hunger and all that, man. No, man. What the scripture say again? Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 15. 
for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. And look, that's that race right scripture for your ass right there, man. One people shall fight up against another. What does it say again? It says, um, and one people shall stand up to fight against another with swords in their hands. And a sword is any kind of instrument. Some people are going to be having bats. You had a militia coming out our people soon come, man. Killing them, killing them by the thousands, man. You wait, cause shit, the only thing, you know what I'm saying, the Negroes, Latinos, and, and Native American is are teaching their people right about now, it's how to dance, man. When you got these heathens, you got these so-called white, white people, they teaching their kids, they're gun rangers, you know what I'm saying? They're learning uh, military tactics, like um, camouflaging themselves, you know what I'm saying? Um, laying on the ground, you know? Um, being, becoming a wall, like camouflage, invisible, so to speak. That's what these heathens are teaching their kids. But what are, what are our people teaching their kids? How to dance, man. How to act like an asshole, man. You know, how to play video games, how to roll blunts and all that, man. You know, how to be whores and thoughts, drug dealers and game bangers, man. When these Edomites, these so-called white people are teaching their kids how to really, you know what I'm saying, military warfare, man. So once again, 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draw of night. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. See, our people didn't learn nothing, you know what I'm saying, from um, Louisiana, was um, Katrina. You know what I'm saying? You, you remember that flood, when that flood happened in Katrina, you had these so-called white people abandoning together, man. And you Israelites were left for dead, man. Out there in um, Louisiana, man. You know what I'm saying? New Orleans and all that, man. Y'all was left for dead out there, man. And the crackers banded together. And what did they say? What was one of their main slogans? If anything come through here, just brown it in a paper bag, it's getting gunned down, you know what I'm saying? That race riot is coming. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans aren't even getting prepared for it, man. You're not even getting prepared for it. Read knowing. And swords in their hands. Now look, look, a whole lot of people are going to be getting lynched again, man. They're going to be chasing y'all through the woods. They're going to be chasing y'all through the streets of America, man. It's going to get bad out here for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. The only thing y'all want to do is pop mollies and do all kind of manner of BS, man. With a guy of the Bible. And look, and how is this, why is this happening? Because the guy of the Bible wants it to happen, man. Okay? You have a bunch of shot wants it to happen, man. Matter of fact, I come right back to that. Let's get this Amos right quick. Since I said that. I said the God of the Bible wants it to happen, right? Anything that happens on the face of the earth is the God of the Bible that's in control of it, of it all, man. So this is Amos. That's the only thing Jake want to do, beat some damn drums and all this. Well, um, these Edomites are going to be beating, your, beating a drum, which is your head and your ass soon come. This um Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil, meaning bad times, eve meaning time, ill meaning bad? Shall there be bad times in a city and the Lord have not done it? So all these things, all these race riots, the cannibalism, the famine, everything that's coming, you have about Shemir Rashad, the God of the Bible is bringing it, man. He's bringing it. The biggest I told you so is coming. Reading on, though. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse um, 16. For there shall be sedition among men. Even though you got the president, you got Kim Jong-un and the president shaking hands and all that, that. What do that mean? What does that mean to the God of the Bible? The God of the Bible says he's bringing death and destruction, man. So that, that's going to that's gonna trump all that other nonsense that you see going on. You know what I'm saying? That's circus and bread. What does it say again? Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men. And I got the word for the um, definition for the word sedition. Conduct or speech exciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. These men, you know, man, the streets is getting ready to get crazy, man. Yeah, I'm sitting here doing this lesson, yeah, you get to see cars going through in the background, you know what I'm saying? You got people, you know what I'm saying, you know, moving in deep freezers and across the street they're playing drums and things of that nature. Just not knowing it all here. Days like this is, is coming to an end, man. Me doing a lesson like this, all that's coming to an end, man. You have a bunch of them shots really getting ready to let it loose, man. It says it's going to be sedition among men and invading one another. People are going to be invading one of each other's houses soon. Come, man. Word up. And look, man, because it's going to be a famine out here, man. A famine of bread. 
This is a definition for sedition again. Um, conduct or speech exciting people to rebel against the authorities. It's going to get so bad out here. These people ain't going to give a damn what the police got to say or the government or the president or none of that nonsense, man. Okay? And we telling you all these things before it happened, man. But it's not people going to watch this video and take heed, man, get their acts together with the God of the Bible. Uh, look, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. I think not, man. I think not. Why? Because the, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians are rebellious, man. They're hard-headed. You know? Let's see. Let's, let's read on. For there should be sedition among men and invading one another. Yeah, people are going to be coming up against each other, tearing each other heads off, man. And see, the prophets ain't going to take part in that because our job is just to warn you, man. When all hell breaks loose, you have a bunch of shots going to take us, Lord willing, I'm part of that number and put us somewhere secluded, in a secluded area, man. Okay? Being well protected, Lord willing, man. It says, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. It's going to be every man for themselves, man. Nobody's going to give a damn about what the government got to say in that day, man. It's one of those race riot scriptures, man. And let's see if it's all about love in that day, man. You got Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans talking about some, um, we need to show more love. It's all about love. It's all about love. Well, we're going to see in that day if it's all about love, man. This is, I got a precept. This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yavashai, shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. Shit, people that's right next door to you that you wave to each and every day. Hey, look, man. Everybody's going to be against each other in that day, man. If, if somebody seen you go in your crib with some grocery bags last week and shit pop off, this week, hey, they coming up in your crib, man. They're going to grab their arms, you know what I'm saying? You have militia, you have, you have groups getting up with each other, man. Just going from house to house, man. Getting people goods, man. What does it say again? Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13. And it shall come to pass. Look, future prophecy, man, it ain't happened yet, right? In that day, when all hell break loose, in the time of martial law and all that, damn, dude. That a great tumult, and our people still want to stay here in America, man, with your car sounding like that, man. You really, you still want to stay here in America, man. Your damn car sounding like it's on his last leg, for real. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall be among them. And they shall lay hold, every one on the hand of his neighbor. And his neighbor shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. The old woman that you used to speak to, cut her grass and all that, man. If, if you know that she got some food in her crib, you going in there, man. You're going to take her shit, man. That's how bad it's going to get, man. That's how bad it's going to get out here, man. Ain't going to be no um love thy neighbor in that day. So going back. Marie, I'm going to read 16 again. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 16. And there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not... Regard their kings, no princesses, no princesses, and the course of their actions shall stand in their hands. So yeah, you got a homeboy, his name Tyrone, you don't give a damn about Tyrone in that day. If your kids need to eat and Tyrone and them got food, guess what? Tyrone dead ass, man. It says, verse 17, and a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. That's that, that's that martial law right there, man. You're going to, and look, nobody ain't got to believe it, man. Nobody has not got to believe the words that you have about Shemiah was shot. Because what? All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. What that scripture say again? Verse 17. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. So if you're in a, um, say like if you go out of town and martial law pop off, your ass stuck out of town, man. You ain't getting back to your crib. Because they're going to they're gonna have the um, cities carted off, man. You know what I'm saying they're gonna um, block those exit ramps to where you get on the belt line and that and all that and go out of town. Why do you think they're doing so much construction on these highways, man? Every time you go to a different city or you're just, just riding down the highways, man, you see the um, these Edomites, these so-called white people, the government working on these highways, man. Cause they're gonna be able to. They're trying to um, make it to where these tanks can come down them highways and block them off, man. It only takes like a couple of minutes to block the whole city off, man. There ain't nobody getting in and ain't nobody getting out, man. 
So you're going to desire to go see your mama, but hey, man, look, curfew and all that is coming, man. You're going to desire to go into the city, but you ain't going to be able to. Why? Because you have a bunch of shots setting it all up. Verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid, because everybody's thug right about now. Ain't nobody afraid of that. But in that day when martial law pop off, men going to be afraid because you're going to have them gurgle trees running in and out of your house, man. Tearing your shit up, taking all your goods and throwing you in the back of those cars, man. And those vehicles taking you right to a concentration camp, man. Taking you head first to a concentration camp. Why do you think all these concentration camps are being built, man? Why do you think the majority of these old grocery stores aren't being in, um, like brung back to life? Like you see your old Win Dixie, you thinking to yourself, damn, they need to bring back another grocery store to that to that spot. No, they ain't gonna do that, man, because that's where y'all gonna the majority of our people and these other heathens are gonna be carted off into, man. And they're they gonna torture y'all asses up in there, man. And it says in that day men gonna be afraid, because everybody's thug, everybody's rock hard right about now. But in that day, everybody's gonna be afraid. And, and look, because of pride, you got a whole lot of prideful people, man. What did the scripture say? Um, before pride is destruction. Now, uh, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. So before all these things happen, people are proud. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell nobody nothing, but you wait till this pop off. See how, see how these people's faces looking that day. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, man. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, man. I don't care if you've been standing beside a person for like 30 years, you ain't gonna give a damn about them when all hell break loose, man. You ain't gonna give a damn about them when all hell break loose. And our people better wake up to that fact, man, or get destroyed, man. Once again, 19, a man should have no pity upon his neighbor. This Babylon, this place got the F and go, man. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. And spoil their goods, meaning they're going to take your goods. The word spoil means rob. They're going to take your goods, man. You got some canned goods in your house. Y'all better start watching the movie like The Purge. You know what I'm saying? What's another one? The Road. And, and, and all those other um, movies, that, those end time prophecy movies. Better start watching them, man. Because going into how America is going to be soon come. And throughout the four corners of the earth, but mainly here in America, man. Says they're going to spoil their goods. Because of the, because of the lack of bread. Look, it's going to be a lack of bread, right? Why is it going to be a lack of bread? Because these grocery stores and these restaurants are going to be closed down. Yeah, how about Shemel Shai is going to close America down, man? okay? He's going to close it down for good, man, okay? And that's a heavy scripture right there, man. It says, um, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, meaning all hell going to be breaking loose, man. And these, and these people going to be wanting some food, man. Babies going to be crying. Um, daddy's gonna be upset, you know what I'm saying? Cause the woman is getting on their damn nerves. Go get us something to eat. We hungry, hungry, hungry. Man, so this is gonna get bad out here, man. Just from reading these scriptures right here, man, you can tell that it's gonna get bad, man. You know? It's gonna, it's gonna get bad out here, man, for you people, man. Sedition among men. And I'm gonna jump down. Let me see. I read 27. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 27 For now all the plagues come upon the whole earth And ye shall remain in them Meaning it ain't going to be no escape for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans To get out of the judgments of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, man Yahweh Bashem Yahushai got you in his clutches You can't get out The scripture said, and, and no man shall deliver you Matter of fact, let's get that right quick Let's get that right quick Line upon line, line upon line Let's get that dude around me right quick. Why people thinking about singing and dancing and all that? The, the God of the Bible got something for you, man. Our people are gonna wish they wouldn't have never came against the God of the Bible, man. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32. Salakia. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the God of the Bible, when he's taking you through that famine, taking you through that race riot, taking you through cannibalism, putting all those plagues on you, throwing you in a concentration camp and all, and you being tortured, you ain't going to be able to escape out of that, man. 
Why? Because ain't nobody going to be able to deliver you out of the clutches that you have by Shemir and Rashad. Because why? The God of the Bible is controlling everything, man. Once again, verse 27. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For Yahweh shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. So the Negroes, Latinos, the Native American Indians, they didn't want to hearken to the words of the Lord, man. Yahweh by Shemir and Rashad got something for your black ass, man. Straight up, man. He got something for you, man. You know? Mm, 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 mm. I got to read that again. 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh shall not deliver you. But look, look though, I thought, I thought the Lord loved everybody, right? Because ye have sinned against him. And the only ones that can sin against the God of the Bible are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians because the laws of the Bible were given to you, man. Y'all better take heed. But we know the majority of our people are not, you know what I'm saying? But it's all good. Let's jump to the 49th verse. I was saying plagues upon thee. Widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pessimists to waste thy houses with destruction and death. And that's exactly what's coming. And ain't nobody going to be able to, del to deliver you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians out of it, man. The God of the Bible said, I'm bringing the plagues, man. Different diseases, man. You name it, man. You thought the H1N1 was something. You thought the SARS was something. You thought the Ebola virus was something. You thought the um, bacteria, um, flesh-eating disease was something. That ain't nothing, man, compared to what the God of the Bible is getting ready to bring. The God of the Bible said, look, I'm bringing widowhood. So a whole lot of men going to die in the Third World's War, man. You know? And a whole lot of men just going to die out here, period, man. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be getting killed off, man. And look, and look, your woman, you know what I'm saying, going to be tooken. She's going to be raped. The next thing you know, she's probably going to get ate. Well, the majority of them are going to get ate. But a whole lot of these women going to get raped. See, these women, you know what I'm saying, um, the God of the Bible got them in a trick bag, too. All these women walking around talking about some, um, I, I, I refuse to have a man. I want to be single. I want to be independent. Well, let's see how independent you are when all hell break loose, man. When somebody's running up in your house taking your shit, man. Right? Because when that martial law pop off, them Gregor Truth's going to be going around to each house, man. Pulling people out of that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Beating them, killing them. You know what I'm saying? Taking them off to the concentration camps and taking all their goods. Anything that's in that house that's worth something is going to be taken, man. Why? Well, because that's the Lord, that's the the Bible. Henceforth, the title of this lesson, The Biggest I Told You So, is coming. Once again, 49. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty. And look, man, a whole lot of people are going to be cast out into the streets, man. They're going to lose their jobs. A whole lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Before all these people start losing their jobs, guess what? The servants of the Lord tell you about it, right? Before all these women, these women, they want to be single and independent anyway. But the God of the Bible, you know what I'm saying, is going to take your husband and get them killed, man. And the majority of your husband is going to go fight because that draft is coming back. The so-called white man, he ain't got enough people to fight in, to fight in his military. So that draft is coming back, man. And the majority of you men, you thugs, so like you game bangers, you bad boys, the so-called white man is going to draft y'all and drop y'all off. Drop y'all off over there in the Middle East, man, to fight that Third World War. And your ass going to die, man. Famine. A whole lot of people going to be dying of famine, man. And, and what the scriptures say, let's get, let's, get, let's get that Lamentations right quick. Let's see what the scriptures got to say about a famine. Our people think a famine is a good thing. Oh, yeah, man, shit ain't nothing, man. I'm going to always have food. But that ain't what the God of the Bible had to say. This um, Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9. So like you. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9. And you're going to hear the, look, look, the, the beat of the drum is sounding off now. You hear the trumpet sounding off now with these words that I'm speaking. But Jake in the background beating drums, having fun. Still trying to be rap artists, man. When all hell, when, when the Titanic is sinking, man. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. So you see those people, the people, the men that do go to World War um, three, they do get carted off and put, shipped over there to the Middle East. And die by way of sword, which means any killing instrument. Do you know they better off, you know what I'm saying, than the people that die by way of famine? Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9, once again. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for the want of the fruits of the field. Yeah, your body craves food, man. And when your body can't get food, what does it do? 
it resorts to eating itself, man. So a whole lot of people going to die by way of famine, man. So let's go back. That's what the scriptures said. Only thing we're telling you is what the scriptures are saying. Famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. And that's exactly what's coming, man. Look, though, before, before it happened, didn't we tell you about it? Before all these things came to pass, didn't, the, didn't the, uh, the, um, the prophets of the Lord tell you about these things? But nah, our people was too hard-headed. They, look, they wouldn't listen. They, they knew it all. Our people knew it all. A bunch of know-it-alls that really don't know shit. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom. Which are the angels? Those are the eyes of the Lord. It says, um, and I would destroy it from off the face of the earth. And that's going to be another um, one of those big I told you so moments right there, man. When America's being destroyed by the God of the Bible, man. You have by Shemia Rashad with nuclear fire. You know what I'm saying? In the chariots of the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? Zapping this place, man. And America going to already be on fire, man. Before the Lord even come, man. It's going to be a beautiful thing, man. Once again, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold. The eyes of the Lord power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which are the angels, are upon the sinful kingdom, which is America, and I would destroy it from off the face of the earth. See, the so-called white man think America's going to be here forever, man, because he got he, he's a so-called superpower right about now. Just not knowing that his power came from on high, man. The God of the Bible gave the so-called white man the power, man, to rule over the earth right about now, man. Pursuing the Job 9 and 24, he forgot about that scripture. So it's going to be one of the biggest I told you so's for him too, man, coming. You know, when America's being melted down by ICBM missiles and the chariots, you know what I'm saying, shooting that laser beam fire on this place. It says, saving, look, um, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving, that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. So while America's being destroyed, the God of the Bible is going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel out of America, man, by way of UFOs, man. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Lord willing, a part of that number. But that, that scripture right there, I'm just bringing out scriptures basically that's going to tell our people in that day, I told you so. I told you this was going to happen. You didn't believe me. The biggest I told you so is coming, man. Once again, it is coming. Let's get Isaiah 66. Our people think the Lord, no sense, coming. Well, we'll start at 13 first. Let me get 13. So our people think the Lord is coming nice. And it, what we... Oh, see, that's a, man, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, two-thirds, y'all need to freaking die, man. We're telling you exactly what does save the Lord, does save the Bible, saying, y'all say, nah uh that ain't coming, nah uh nah uh Isaiah chapter 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord coming, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. We tell our people that that's how the Lord is coming, and now our people say, nah uh So guess what? The biggest I told you so ever is coming, man. Because this is exactly how the God of the Bible is coming. Um, contrary to what your pastor and church tell you, man. Once again, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord coming. The day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh coming. See, we tell our people that a so called black man is coming back. Lord Yahweh Shah. White woolly hair, big giant beard, and he's going to be on a chariot the size of a mountain. They don't believe us, right? So when it do happen, the biggest I told you so is coming. Once again, it says, um, to let, and look, he coming with wrath and fierce anger. Whatever happened to the Lord, the Lord loving everybody, man. And he's going to come back with roses, tulips, snicker bars, juju beans, cotton candy, and all that other BS. Nah, man. He's coming cruel with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, meaning the land of America is going to be desolate, man. Meaning it's going to be uninhabited. The word desolate means uninhabited, man. Ain't no, ain't no human going to inhabit the land of America anymore, man. When those missiles hit, man. Only thing that's going to inhabit this land is desert creatures, man. That's it. Pursuant to the scriptures, right? It says, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. But I thought the God of the Bible, you no know, saying, hates the sin. He don't hate the sinner. The, the biggest I told you so is coming, man. The biggest I told you so is coming. I'm going to jump to verse 11. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil. I thought the God of the Bible ain't going to do no, no harm to nobody. He says he's going to punish the world for their evil, man. You ain't got nothing but homosexuality being promoted here in America. You know what I'm saying? Unrighteous decrees. 
um, false customs, false idols, all that is being promoted here in America. So the God of the Bible says he's going to punish the world for that evil, man. The God of the Bible got a serious judgment coming to you people, man. And the wicked for their iniquity, man. You so-called white people, y'all got hell to pay too, man. Your iniquity, your wickedness, man, you got to pay for it, man. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease you, Rothschilds, you Gettys, you Bloomberg. We tell y'all, y'all going ahead for us in the captivity. Y'all don't believe us, so guess what? The biggest I told you so moment is coming for you too, man. I told you so. That's what we're going to tell y'all. We told you so. We're going to say that the two-thirds, Lord willing, I'm part of that number. Once again, I'm about to We're going to tell you, um, you healers and two-thirds, I told you so in that day, man. That everything that we were speaking according to the Bible was true, man. It says, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And who is the most proudest nation on the face of the earth? You so-called white people, man. Okay? It says, um, and lay low the heartiness of the terrible, man. Okay? And we tell you all these things before it happened, man. And we, can, we can't wait till that day come. The biggest I told you so is coming, man. It said, my servant shall eat. But you shall mourn, my servants shall, shall drink, and you, sh you shall be thirsty. This is roughly paraphrasing. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. Just going into some scriptures that we bring out week in and week out, and our people don't believe us, man. No one believes us. So the biggest I told you so is coming, man. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. See, the Lord is coming with fire. He ain't coming with hugs, man. He ain't coming smiling either, man. He's an austere man, okay? For behold, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh will come with fire. Meaning that nuclear fire, those ICBM missiles, 200 million missiles is going to destroy America soon come. And with his chariots, like a whirlwind, his chariots are what they ignorantly call UFOs. We call them IFOs. Because they're identifiable to us, man. But these people, the so-called white men, call them UFOs. Man, this, this devil done, man. And, that, and that's what's coming, man. We tell our people, according to the Bible, that UFOs are going to invade America, man. And certain other parts of the earth, man. They're going to they're gonna zap America to hell and back, man. It says, um, and with this chariot, like a whirlwind. Henceforth, that song that we used to sing back when we first came over here in slavery. Swing low, swing chariot, coming forth to carry us home. That's what's coming to destroy America. That's, coming, that's what's coming to help destroy America, man. Okay, along with the ICBM missiles. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. We tell our people that the God of the Bible is going to kill a whole lot of people. But they don't, no nah, man, if, if that's the God you serve, then I don't want to serve him. If your God is all about killing people, then I don't want to serve him. That's what our people say. Well, you're going to serve the God of the Bible, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're going to serve the God of the Bible whether you want to or whether you don't want to, man. Because first thing he's going to do is kill your black ass, you know what I'm saying, or your yellow ass or your tan ass. You know then he's going to bring you back, man, and put your spirit in another body in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to serve him anyway, man. Look, the slain of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, shall be many, man. Shall be many. Let's bring out another scripture. I got, I got a couple more scriptures, and then I'm going to wrap it up, man. I'm in the spirit right about now, man. The biggest I told you so is coming, man. And we can't wait, man. We can't wait. This is um, Jeremiah chapter 15. We start at 2. And it shall come to pass. Future prophecy, it ain't happened yet. If they shall say unto thee, whether shall we go forth? The ones of our people that didn't want to take heed to the words you have about Shemel Shai, soon come, they're going to want answers, man. We out there on the highways and byways giving them the answers to all their questions. But guess what? Ain't nobody asking no questions, man. But then when all hell break, break loose, then all of a sudden these stupid-ass Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, they're going to want to ask questions in that day. But guess what? It's going to be too late, man. So once again, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 2. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, it's like it. Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And ain't, ain't that what we're telling our people? Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible. Every time, man, we give credit to the, high, to, the, to the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. Look, we don't take no credit, man, for the things that we tell our people. We tell them it's thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible every time, right? So it says, um, Then thou shalt tell them, 
Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashimia Rashad. Look, such as are for death to death. So a whole lot of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is going to die a horrible death, right? It's going to be beautiful. It says, um, and such as are for the sword to the sword. A whole lot of people are going to die by way of the gun, getting hung, getting lynched. You name it, man. The sword is any killing instrument, right? And such as are for the famine to the famine. A whole lot of our people are going to starve their asses off soon come, man. Excuse my French. Excuse my French, but a whole lot of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is going to die by way of famine, man. And we just read, you know what I'm saying, um, in Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9, what, what, the, um, what a famine will do to a person. When you're starving, when you can't get food, their body start eating on itself, man. And that's what's going to happen. It says, um, and such as are, Salakia, and such as are for the captivity, and such as are for the captivity, to the captivity. The majority of our people gonna get thrown in that concentration camp, man. Head first, man. And you're gonna get your ass whooped up in there, man. And they're gonna torture you and everything. And look, and when you up in them concentration camps, or you someone sitting starving your ass off, or you getting ready to get lynched by your enemy that the scripture told you not to trust, the biggest I told you so is gonna pop in your freaking head, man. It says, and I will point over them four kinds, saith the Lord, you have about Shemiah and Shai. The, sw the sword to slay and the dogs to tear. We tell our people that they're going to get ate by these animals. Because when that famine comes, these animals are going to get let loose out of these zoos, man. And your neighborhood dog, man. If you got a dog in your house, your dog going to need to eat. And that day, man, these squirrels, you name it, man. All these animals are going to be getting against our people, man. Man, our people's done, man. Done, yo. These birds that you hear chirping right about now, and that day they're going to be eating on you people, man. They're going to be pecking your freaking eyeballs out, man. And you deserve it, man. It says, um, I'm going to read three again. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 3. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shai, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven. Them birds are going to get loose. We have hawks, eagles, you name it, man. I'm saying crows, everything, eating the hell out you people soon come, man. Look, and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. You can have all kinds, of, you can have lions, tigers, bears, oh my. You can have all kinds of animals, man. Coming out, Komodo dragons, all these uh, panthers, all these animals that's in these zoos, man, gonna be eating the hell out you people soon come, man. You know, you name it, man. Animals that don't even eat meat are going to be starting to eat meat. Because they're going to be hungry in that day. They're going to need something to eat, man. These gorillas and all that, man, going to be eating on you people, man. And that's just saith the Lord. That's saith the Bible. And when all these things are happening to you, the first thing you're going to say is, damn, they told me so. But then it's going to be too late. So let's get into some scriptures on, um, I told you so for these heathens. You know, I got I to gotta be perfect balance with this lesson. I got to be perfect balance with this lesson, man. Let's get Revelation right quick. Because the biggest I told you so is coming to you Edomites too, man. You so-called white people, man. The biggest I told you so is coming to y'all too. So this is Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You let the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians into slavery. Your red ass is going into slavery, man. According to the Bible, the, starting off with you Rothschilds, you Gettys, you Bloombergs, the biggest I told you so is coming for your red asses too, man. You going ahead first into captivity, man. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And the sword is any killing instrument, man. They, they, um, they hung us. They burnt us. They actually stabbed us with swords. They shot us down with them guns. And we meditate on terror, man. Oh, look, they fed us the animals. They fed us the alligators, um, sharks. You know what I'm saying? They fed us the dogs. They um, they put us in quicksand and, made, and they drowned us. You know, they buried us alive. So all that is coming for you heathens, man. Starting off with you so-called white people, man. You Edomites, man. It says, um, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It didn't say might. It didn't say um, maybe. It didn't say uh, I think about it. It said must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints man and who are the saints the israelites so the israelites starting off with their elect is sitting back patiently waiting man on the scripture to come to pass here, here go another scripture um i told you so scripture for you heathens 
starting off with you Rothschilds, you get it, because y'all going to be the ones, that, the first ones to go into captivity. You know what I'm saying? You peon crackers, y'all going to die here in America, man. And the God of the Bible is going to have his elect men go out to you, um, you elites, man. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that, it's like it. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. It didn't say some of them. It didn't say five of them. It didn't say ten of them, a thousand of them. It said all of them, man. All you heathen nations are going head first into captivity. It's going to be the biggest I told you so known to mankind when we put you heathens in captivity, man, and slap heavy ass chains on y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? And kick you dead in your ass, man. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, look, every one of them, some of them, every one of them, a few of them, every one of them, five of them, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee, the word spoil means rob. All these nations that robbed us of everything that we had shall be a spoil. And all that prayed upon thee will I give for a prey. So look, that sounds like it's going to be a wrap for you nations, man. It's a wrap for you nation, man. And look, and, and the God of the Bible said, I'm not going to deliver you from these words. I'm going to deliver you to these words. I'm not going to deliver you from these words. So this is Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him. Look, it's evidence the so-called white man took pictures. He painted pictures, took pictures of us being stolen and stolen, right? Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him. Look, we, we were sold on the auction of blocks, right? We're going to do the same thing, man. We're going to be selling you heathens, man. Taking you from one part of the earth to the other, man. We're going to have you all out on them other planets, man. Putting your ass to death, man. And making you work your ass off, man. And selleth him. Or if he be found in his hand, and we still found in the clutches of the so-called white man, 2018. We still found in your clutches, man. So the biggest I told you so is coming for your, your red ass too, man. He says, or oh, if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death, man. Okay? He shall surely be put to death. It's going to be a wonderful thing to see you heathens, man. Get your ass kicked, man. And hand it to you. This is Deuteronomy. Chapter 30, verse 7. And the Lord, thy power, Yahweh Bashim Shai, will put all these curses upon thine enemies and upon and upon them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So all the curses written of in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, do you know it's gonna come upon you heathens, man? You heathens know saying gonna have to wear that, man. You heathens are gonna have to wear that ass whooping, man. You, I mean, you are gonna have to wear that ass whooping, man. Straight up, man. Yahweh Bashim Shai is gonna put all these curses, man. You're going to work your ass off, man, from sun up to sun down. The only time you won't be working is, is during the Sabbath, man. You're going to rest in that day, but you really ain't going to get no rest because you're going to be so full of aches and pains that you really ain't going to be able to sit your ass down anyway. You know what I'm saying? All right, look, man, we can't wait till that scripture come to pass, man. All these curses, man. You know, all these curses. And look, and we told, you know what I'm saying, our people, you know what I'm saying, that these heathens are nothing to the God of the Bible. That's going to be the biggest I told you so in that day. Let's get that right quick. I got a couple more scriptures and then I'm going to wrap it up. Got a couple more scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. The point has been proven. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So when we tell our people that the God of the Bible only cares about the Hebrew Israelites, ain't that what the Bible is saying? Ain't that exactly what the Bible is saying? What the Lord say again, man? Who the eagerly call God, the Most High Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. Look, all nations before him. Look, the Chinese, look, the so-called white man, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Duduin Africans, the Arabs. The Dothead East Indians, the Hawaiians, they're nothing to the God of the Bible, man. And he's going to prove it to them, man. He's going to prove it to them. And we tell you before it happened, man. It's going to be the biggest I told you so ever. It's going to be the biggest I told you so ever coming, man. From all these nations and two-thirds, man. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17, once again. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing. 
and vanity. So the God of the Bible, you know what I'm saying? You other heathen nations don't mean shit to the God of the Bible, man. Nothing, man. Nothing, man. The God of the Bible, you know what I'm saying, is our power, man. Not you heathens, man. And let's get it right quick. See, we don't just talk. We don't just talk, no saying we back everything we say up with scriptures. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. This is the most high speaking, who the ignorant call God, right? And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Israel is a people before us a place. Representing you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Y'all are the Israelites, right? And that I am the Lord, your power. And none else. That's why the God of the Bible just said in um, Isaiah 40 and 17 that these nations are nothing to him, man. And he just said what? And that I am the Lord, your power, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And when that comes to pass, when that is truly, because we realize it already. But when that is um, actually realized by all these people, it's going to be the biggest I told you so moment known to mankind. When the God of the Bible actually um, lets these people know that he don't give a damn about them, man. And that only Israel can be saved, not these heathens, man. Only the Israelites can be saved, man. I mean, we bring out these scriptures week in and week out, man. I mean, what the hell? These people can't grasp it, man. They just can't get it, man. And it's plain, man. So let's get like two scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up after this, man. I got three more scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. This is Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. But Israel, the whole world, but Israel so-called white man but israel the chinese but israel the duty the africans but israel the diehead east indian but israel the chinese but israel the japanese but israel who else did i forget anybody whoever i forgot but israel shall be saved in the lord yahweh bashim shot with an everlasting salvation you shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end so John 3.16, that's the precept for it. That's the word that's talking about, the world of Israel, man, okay? The world of Israel, okay? Not the whole world. Next scripture, just proving that Israel are the only ones that can be saved. And I got one more after this, and I'm going to wrap it up. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Yehoah shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. But the point of that scripture was what? The Israelites can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. You heathens try to call on the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, you want to. The scripture say what? The name of the Lord is dreadful to the heathens, man. Dreadful to the heathens. And I got one more, and then I'm going to wrap it up, man. I got one more scripture, and then I'm going to wrap it up, man. The biggest I told you so is coming. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 26. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth, like the vision, the prophecies that we tell our people that's coming, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesied of times that are far off. Our people don't think the scriptures that I just read are, are, are not coming no time soon. The ones of our people that do think the scriptures are true, they don't. the majority of them don't think it's going to come to pass no time soon. We tell them to get right with the God of the Bible. Man, I just read enough scriptures, man, that's going to come to pass if it haven't already came to pass, man. But our people say, nah, man, it ain't coming to pass no time soon. That's why they continue in their madness, man. It says, um... This is the point right here, 28. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken, and the Lord speaks through his men, shall be done, saith the Lord. We read in Isaiah the 55th chapter, verse 11, uh, So shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth, they shall not return unto me void. So the God of the Bible said, yo, yo, speak my words into the children of Israel, right? Because they ain't going to go out void, man. All right? I'm not going to prolong my word anymore. So that's why the God of the Bible got all these things coming to pass. And I got one more scripture. I said that that was my last scripture. But I do got one more. And I'm going to end it off on this. This is Numbers chapter 23. Verse 19. 
Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make, make it good? And how does the God of the Bible speak again? Through his men, man. So the words that I'm reading right about now are from Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Why? Because the God of the Bible is speaking through me, man. Just like the prophets of old, man. Just like 2018, the prophets are doing the same thing that the prophets of old did. But guess what? Henceforth, the title of the video, the biggest I told you so is coming, man. For two-thirds and you heathens, man. And you can't say you haven't been told, man. Hey, with that, man, hey. Lord willing, brothers were edified through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. With that, man, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rekakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, man. The ones that taught me the 100% truth according to this Bible right here. Peace and blessings to all you sincere icons, man. Pushing this Bible week in and week out, regardless of people here for a bit. Guess what? Guess why? Because the biggest I told you so is coming. Shalom.